I designed the assessive procedure for women who wish to conceive after the procedure. It's just been such a hard road trying to find options. It was one of those moments in your life where you think, this is gonna be huge. Whatever decision I make right now could determine my future. After weighing everything and hearing all the doctors' opinions and spending way too much time on YouTube, for us, I think the choice is Dr. Lee. I just can't wait for you to feel better. <laughs> I mean, I've always wanted to jog as a couple. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be that couple that jogs together. <laughs> Fibroids or not. You could play basketball. You could come out to the to the courts. Honey. You just, your, your life is going to change. Don't dream so big. Your, <laughs> life, your life is going to change. <laughs> So we all well today? I'm excited and very scared. We're all so excited. Yeah. I have to talk about the risks of any surgery, okay? And I don't want to scare you, but they're the same for a minimally invasive surgery as they are for a major surgery. Because unpredictable things can happen, even if things go perfectly well. The theoretical risks of any surgery include those of anesthesia, blood loss, infection, and trauma. So this procedure is very, very low risk in good hands. I wouldn't want, wouldn't want anybody else except you doing this. Well, and I've treated many thousands of fibroids and, and uh, over a thousand patients. So I think that the reality is that you're going to do super well. And then I need to see you for your post-op check in eight to ten days after the procedure okay. to check your incisions. Again, if you have any incisional issues, you can always take a picture of your phone and, and text it to me, and I can take a look at it. So okay. That's so nice. We'll see you on the big day. Yes, yeah. we'll see you oh, soon. Thanks. Very soon. We're gonna get all this stuff behind us and get you back. And I'm just trying to figure out schedule for next week. Okay. Because um, I'm not going to be here for Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. I'm trying to get back on Thursday. Um, I think you should take all the next week. Okay. I'm your doctor. Okay, great. I think you should do it. Yeah, I feel pressured sometimes being in this industry to always be working. That pressure gets taken to a whole other level when you are limited and you're told that you're going to have to be out of work. Couple junket package okay. in the pipeline, but it okay. doesn't have to go up until after I'm back. Oh, perfect. Okay, so cool. cool. We should be good on so that. So we'll just hang out on that. Okay. Cool. We love okay. you. Keep us updated okay. when you're like you good guys. to send an Thanks update. Soon. We'll be thinking about you. Okay. The last night before the surgery is probably the scariest night of my life because the anticipation and the fear of what is going to happen tomorrow. I know I have the best doctor, I know I have the best procedure for me, but tomorrow it's all going to change forever. Let's get some rest. It's good. Last night full of fibroids, that's it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You know the risks versus the benefits. Um, and any question about 
any of that. So should we just get on with it? Get these fibroids taken care of? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> You've waited a long time for this. I know. So this is kind of a, a big moment. But, but, a, but a good big moment, right? It's good. So give him a kiss goodbye. I love you. I'm so bad. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna be strong. Okay. I'm gonna be Incision is at 815, only has to be a few millimeters. Now we're gonna place a needle into the abdomen and that needle will be used to put gas into it. And that space is the space that we'll be working in. Then we can place the laparoscopic sleeves and those ports allow us to place instruments in and out. Now we insert the laparoscope through the sleeve and we should be able to see inside the abdomen. So the next step is we're going to locate the uterus. And I'm also going to move the uterus a little bit. We have all this omentum, that's this normal fatty layer that's temporarily covering the uterus. So we're gonna just shake that a little bit and, and we can see these are all fibroid tumors here. Those, that's a fibroid. That's one, that's one, that's one, that's one. That's, that's one. And they are subserosal fibroids. They are the fibroids that grow on the outer surface of the uterus. Now we're going to place our next instrument. This is the ultrasound transducer. This instrument allows us to see very, very small fibroids down to two millimeters even. Now we're gonna look for a condition called endometriosis. This is part of the diagnostic laparoscopy. And we do find some endometriosis. Endometriosis is a condition where the lining of the uterus, which is normally inside the uterine cavity, somehow finds its way outside and begins to grow in other places. That these two black dots and that red area are all endometriosis. So we'll come back at the end of the procedure and treat that endometriosis. So we're gonna get started and start ablating some of these obvious subserosal fibroids here. We'll place the radio frequency ablation needle, which has a deployable electrode array, and that's what we deploy inside the fibroid to create heat within the tumor. And then you can see it entering the abdomen on the right, and there it is. So we'll start with this fibroid here, 3.1 centimeters. We're going to deploy the electrode array, one, two, three, and we step on the foot pedal to start the ablation. Okay. I'm going to coagulate out the needle track so we are free to move on to the next fibroid. Now let's try to flip this up again. And we are done with this one. Now there's one down here, way down low. Come on, you son of a gun. Okay, now we're gonna put the uterus back. And there she goes. Now let's find all these little guys. There's one down by her lining. I know, I just gotta figure out how to get to it. Not a good place to have a fibroid. And some of them were, again, very close to major vessels. That's what I meant by bad place. All right, so we got that one. Done, all right. Okay, so that we've hit how many, Lise? So 13. That, 13, yeah. Now, push the uterus in. So this is fulguration of left uterosacral endometriosis. There was 
also a little bit up here. So the endometriosis is a condition that can prevent pregnancy and cause significant menstrual pain. We cannot cure endometriosis, period, but we can reduce it and therefore help symptoms, improve fertility. And we got it. Good, that should help Aaron. Okay, let's irrigate down there. Let's take that, unplug it. And boys and girls, that could be it. All right, we're done. Let's flatten her. Hey, Aaron, it's Dr. Lee, okay? You're just waking up. Everything went terrifically. All righty. Most patients go into the procedure and come out of the procedure very, very well. Uh, the mild discomfort that she's having is, is not, uh, in Aaron's case, going to be very easy for her. Click left to go inside my OBGYN visit or right to see me make one of the biggest decisions of my life. For more information on women's health, visit womenshealth.gov.